Hi, here is Nati from Cinematic Instruments. And in this video, I'm going to be walking you through our newest release, Rhythmic 2. This upgrade contains more than 350 sound sources and more than 500 presets. We have redesigned the user interface um, and organized it for a better overview and less clicking around, so basically an improved workflow. The new engine also allows for more freedom and flexibility to modify the building blocks of your beats. The whole concept was optimized to be more modern and timely. And it's now a better hybrid between organic and electronic sound sources without losing its cinematic power. Finally, Rhythmic 2 can also be used on Contact Player and it is NKS ready, which means you can use it with your NKS controllers such as the machine or the complete control. There are several other new features in this upgrade, but I'm going to be mentioning them as they appear. So let's get started. When you first open Rhythmic 2, you're going to see the main page. This is where you're going to find the presets, which you can navigate either by scrolling or by using the arrows. Right here is where you can save or import your presets into Rhythmic 2. And on the left side of the main page is where you're going to find the presets filter. And as you can see, these filters are combinable. At the bottom, you're going to find the transport bar, which is now fixed. On the left side of the transport bar is where you're going to find your master compression. In order to adjust attack and decay, you just need to slide each of them. In the middle, you find your play button, your dice button, which will choose a random preset for you, and the master time division. On the right side of the transport bar, you're going to find a reverb return, which you just need to slide in order to adjust. Right below it is your reverb type selector, which is a drop down menu with 10 different types of reverb. Then you have the delay return and your delay time selector. Before we move on to the next page, let's listen to some of the presets. At the top left, you're going to see the page navigation tabs, and the next page we're going to visit is the sequencer. Here at the top right, you're going to see the active preset, and the arrows next to it can be used for preset navigation. The main part of the sequencer page consists of the instrument slots or tracks 
and their respective sequencers. Rhythmic 2 has 14 instrument slots available for you. Now, on the left side of the transport bar, you're going to find the pattern length in steps, which you just need to slide in order to adjust. Then you have your reset button, which you can use to reset the entire sequencer. On the right side, you will find the shift button, which you can use to shift your whole sequence. And finally, the drag button, which is a new MIDI export feature. To use it, you just need to drag and drop it into your DAW. Right in the middle of the transport bar, you now have a record button. And since we are here, it's worth mentioning the keyboard section and how it is divided. The green keys will play one shot of your sound sources. The yellow keys will play the whole beat with all of its tracks. And the red keys will play the individual instrument tracks. If you want to learn more about the keyboard section and how to use it in order to improve your workflow, I would suggest that you watch the video that Till made. I will link it on the screen. He gives you some tips and tricks and also mentions other features into more detail. Now let's move on to the next page, the mixer. You can either access the mixer page using the navigation tabs, as you've seen before, but if you are on the sequencer page, you can also just click on the name of the instrument and it will send you straight into the instrument settings. The mixer page is where you're going to be able to individually tweak the sound sources of your beat. Um, it functions like real mixing channels. So here at the top you see the instrument tracks or sound source slots. As I've previously mentioned, there are 14 slots available. To add new sounds into your beat, you just need to click on the plus button. But let's start by checking how the area functions. Right here, you can adjust the volume of your sound sources. As you can see, this is also where you click if you want to open the individual settings of a sound slot. This small keyboard button on the left side is where you click to either activate or deactivate the slot selection via keys. Okay, but what are the available settings for the instrument slots? So, first you have the name of the active sound source for that slot. If you click the name, you're going to find the sound source selector with its filter. And to navigate the sources, you can either scroll or you can use the arrows. If you wish to empty your sound slot, you just have to click here. Below the source name, you will also find the random button. This button can be used to randomize different parameters. And in order to select which parameter, you just have to click here and open the drop down menu. So, for example, if you want to, you can only randomize the sound source choice, but you could also randomize everything at once, including the steps on the tables. And, of course, this button will only affect its respective slot. Moving on, we have a true solo button. Right next to it is the button that you can use to open and close the slot sequencer. Then we have another way to open and close the sound source selector. This is where you can open and close the drive and tone tab, but I'm going to come back to this in a bit. Then we have the slot panorama. You can either click the button to open the table, or you can slide to adjust the values. Next to it is the length, so it functions the same way. You can either open the table or you can slide to adjust. Then we have the tune, the reverb sand for this lot, and the delay sand for this lot. All of which you can adjust by sliding. Okay, so let's talk a bit more about the slot sequencers. Right below the sequencer, on the right side, you're going to find the sequencer tabs. There is a velocity tab, drive, tone, pan, and length. 
On the left side below the sequencer, you will find the arrows, which you can use to adjust the values on the table up and down, or to shift the sequence left and right. Then you have your copy and paste buttons, which means that you can copy the values from one table and paste them into another table. The next button is the sequencer reduction. You can use it to reduce the steps on the table to either the quarter notes, the eighth notes, or to revert it back to the original. Okay, now let's go back and talk about that drive and tone modulation that I mentioned before. So as I said, if you click here, you're gonna be able to open the drive and tone tab. First of all, if you click on tone, you can change it to a low pass filter. To activate them, you just have to click on the square below their names. To adjust the value, you just need to slide the respective wave. Finally, on both cases, you have the possibility of assigning the modulation source. This can be fixed, it can be the sequencer, or it can be controlled by the mod wheel. On the transport bar, you're going to find the total reset button. If you click on it, you're going to reset the whole engine of Rhythmic 2. The mixer page is probably the most complex one on Rhythmic 2. So if you would like to know more about it or if you would like to see it in practice, I would recommend you watch the video that Till made um, in which he builds a beat from scratch using the mixer page and goes into more details. I will link it on the screen. Okay, now it's time for the last page, the modulation page. The modulation page is where you can customize your effects chain. This is the effects chain that's going to be used for the live shaping of your beat and sounds and it can be controlled by the mod wheel. This chain contains 5 slots and you have 13 effects and modulation possibilities. To add an effect to the chain, you just need to click the plus button and select the effect or modulation you would like. And to erase it from your chain, you just need to click on the X button right here. If you would like to change the settings of one of your effects, you just need to click on its name and as you see, it's going to open its modulation table as well as its submenu if it has one. On this modulation table, you can draw the values for the chosen effect. And right below the table, you see this black arrow. This arrow indicates which value it's currently being used for the effect. And this can be controlled either by holding the arrow and sliding it around, or you can use your mod wheel. This allows you to run through the steps on the table in order to shape the sound of Rhythmic 2 in real time. As I've said before, some of these modulation possibilities come with their own subsettings. So let's take a look at some of them. First, we have the main mix volume modulation, which you can use to control the volume of the main mix. If you click here, you're going to activate the docking effect and you can draw the shape for your effect here on this extra table that will appear. And if control is active, that means that the mod wheel table will control the intensity or amount of the ducking effect. This happens without visual feedback though. Now, if you look at the slot volume, you will see that you have the possibility of assigning the shaping to individual parts of your beat. You don't need to affect your whole beat at once. This also appears in other uh, modulation possibilities, for example, the vary slot or the slot length. Mm -hmm. 
Here, as you can see, we also have this invert function, which basically means that the values on the modulation table will be inverted. Of the new features, my personal favorite is the vary slot. You can use this feature to add variation to your beats, and this could either be subtle or it could also be very extreme. And it's super nice and I love it because that means that if you would like to add some turn or roll to your beat, um, you only have to use the mod wheel and you don't need to manually adjust anything, so it's super practical. For the other modulation possibilities, most of the pattern meters that you can control are very easy. Uh, you just need to slide, such as for example here on the chorus, you slide to adjust the rate and the feedback. Again, um, you have 5 slots and you have 13 modulation possibilities. Before we finish for today, I'd like to show you what this real-time modulation not only looks, but also sounds like in practice. So that's it for today. If you have any question, please don't hesitate to ask on the comments below. And I will also link three very helpful videos here on screen. Don't forget to check out our other channels. And thanks a lot for watching. Have fun.